So let's try to do this one before we get to the break. Um, now, you guys look at this one. The last set of examples hopefully should have sparked some memories from me. And you're like, oh, yeah, I kind of remember that. I kind of remember that graph. Like, right? But then I look at this one and you say, OK, I don't really know what that graph looks like. All right? But the important thing that we do understand about this is we do know that we can apply division of polynomials, right? Because we talked about that in chapter two. So if I look at this, I can divide this into this, right? You might say, are you sure? Well, again, like, can I divide 3x into 12x, right? So I mean, they have, as long as they have the same powers here, or if this one's larger, like, you can divide that into the other polynomial. So why don't we go ahead and try, just try it, see what happens. Because I don't know what else we got to lose. We have no idea what this looks like, right? And if we want to if we want to know what the graph looks like, maybe by the division will be as simple. And the other thing I wanted to mention these are the same, right? Does it matter if we have it written as a quotient or if we just have it as a simplified answer? You guys agree those would give you the same graph, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and graph this and see if we can recognize what the graph looks like. So by graphing this, or by dividing, I'm going to have to use long division. You technically could use synthetic division, but I just would say it's just easier just to work with the long division. It's not that many steps. Negative x divides into x. Negative, x. negative 1 time. Because negative 1 times negative x is a positive x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. And again, when I first taught long division, I said, guys, don't do this. This is where everybody makes mistakes. And then I'm looking at people's work, and this is what they're doing. They're not putting their parentheses and subtracting. Okay, So just be careful with that. That goes to 0. 3 minus 1 is 2. Does negative x divide into 2? No. no. So that is your remainder. Does anybody remember what we do with our remainder if we were to write the, pri if we were to write the answer fully? Yeah? You put it over your divisor. So this is um, plus 2 over a negative x minus 1. And then I look at this and I say, huh, does that kind of look similar to something that I've looked at? Because remember, this is the same as that, right? And then I look at this and I say, well, you know what? If I just write this at the end, this looks like it's a reciprocal function, right? Isn't this is just the form we just did? You guys see it? So just by applying some quick division, I can rewrite it as a reciprocal function. Now I, my life I feel is a lot easier because I can identify what's going on. Now this one is a little bit more difficult because I have a negative in front as well as a horizontal shift. So that means I would need to factor out. So my vertical asymptote is really. negative x plus 1. So we're really, the graph is being shifted one unit to the left. So my vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 1. Horizontal asymptote, you guys can see the graph is being shifted down 1. So that's y equals negative 1. Now here's where the magic comes for at least from probably this. So we have an option to find the x-intercept. y equals 0. Should I plug y equals 0 for this equation? Or should I do it like what I did for the other problems and plug it into this equation? You can do either, but I'll tell you guys, if you use this one, it's much better. Because for the last time, to get rid of my denominators, I'm going to multiply on both sides. Correct? And what happens when I do that? Did I erase it? I'm really just setting the numerator equal to zero. zero. So instead of actually even writing this, I just could have said, oh, why don't I just set the numerator equal to 0? You can't do it if you do it this way. In this way, you actually have to add the 1, multiply on both sides. It's, like more, it's way more work. So use the rational function to basically just set your numerator equal to 0. x is equal to negative 3. For the y-intercept, I could show my work plugging 0 in for x. But guys, if I plug 0 in for x here, that goes to 0, that goes to 0. What am I left with? 3 over negative 1. Constant over the constant. So y is equal to 3 over negative 1, which is equal to a negative 3. 
Ta-da. Now let's go and check it before you guys check your phone. 